journalists and trolls don't always look very different. In fact, sometimes things they write on the internet can appear to be the opposite of what they are. News stories can appear to be conspiracies or jokes, while satirical pieces may fool even a hardened skeptic. It's important to develop a list of websites that you believe to be reliable, and to know why to rely on them. Don't just rely on some poster on a news article or forum, or your teenage neighbor's opinion that you see on Facebook. Critically read the comments that people make, and don't just believe the first thing you find whenever you plug a question into Google, Bing, or Yahoo. While the Nigerian print scam has been around for a while, there are many other kinds of attacks on your identity and sensitive information. All of them revolve around getting you to reveal your secrets, not with some super intelligent computer virus. When you log into a website on a computer that isn't yours, make sure you log back out. Then go back to the website to make sure it didn't save your password, especially at public places like businesses, libraries, or schools. It is also important to make sure you do private computer work in private. Don't sit somewhere any bypasser can look over your shoulder to see you entering your passwords or username for your bank or Amazon accounts. When shopping online, it is recommended to use well-known and accredited sites, such as Amazon or eBay. If you do decide to shop on other sites, make sure to research them to verify their credibility. Do your homework and look up reviews or other information about the website, and don't just trust the first thing you see. Be especially careful of sites that ask for unusual methods of payment, such as money order or wire transfer. Be careful of websites that offer very low prices for good items. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. One of the most prolific avenues of confusing information goes by the name Sponsored Content. When we want an answer, or are investigating a product, or doing research, we want facts. We do our best to avoid advertisements. Even the most objective advertisement still has a bias in favor of the company who paid for it. But what about when you can't see an advertisement? What about when you're reading an article or a post or a review of a product that's actually commissioned by the company or investor that makes the product. It's possible the information is objectively true, but it's also possible the author is a really big fan of that one particular brand. This is what we call sponsored content, and it cannot be used to make a real decision. It often misleads us. So we must be vigilant. And if something you are reading fits this criteria, think twice about it. 